The scene starts with the usual theme song. Nothing really changed. The same pirate singing, same animation sequence and alike. But after the song ended, a title card faded into f- to view. The title card read, The Talk. It would say, stay on the screen for at least a few seconds, before it shows the writers of the main course of the director being Paul Tippett, along with the v- usual cast of people who helped with the series, probably many years by now. Of course, a few names came into view, but saw nothing too different. The scene then goes to the bubble splash translation, panning towards the three main houses, the rock, the Easter Island, and the pineapple that, by now, even everyone's grandparents can easily spot. The point of this view then soon changes to the pineapple house, where Spongebob can be seen walking back and forth across his yard. Suspiciously, from his mailbox to the other side of the yard, but he wasn't going too far away, as he had his hands behind his back and looked down onto the ground. He had an expression that seemed like he was anxious about something, something that must be plaguing his mind, but he kept repeating a few words, and Squidward's name. He wasn't sure why, but he had a sense of guilt looming over him. He would soon continue doing this for just a few more seconds, no less until a scene shows Patrick Starr just coming out of his rock home through what seems to be a newspaper. He walked towards the pace and Sponge and asked him if he could use the bathroom. SpongeBob stopped him before he could even enter his own house, and it sounded pretty serious. Hey Patrick, before you go off, do your shenanigans at my house. Can I ask you a question? Patrick was taken aback by the question. As for one thing, it wasn't like SpongeBob to ask such a serious question. And second, he thought that he couldn't do anything wrong. All he wanted was just to use the bathroom. It's not like Spongebob to assume that he was going to just do who just because he had asked him in a particular question. I bled a simple request. Well, gee, Sponge. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just want to use the bathroom because mine got clogged up again. Seeing that Spongebob was in a particular state of mind made him concerned. He might have been a lovable idiot, but he still showed some compassion for his self long life friend. He then walked closer to Sponge and patted his shoulder. Come on, Sponge. What's going on? Immediately, Spongebob just said that what he had to say before it had been held up inside him for what seemed to be like a little while. Patrick, remember all the times that we were doing these shenanigans, getting ourselves into trouble for whatever reason? Whenever we get some type of adventure to do jellyfish fields, or just messing around with Squidward just because we want to include him in our activities. Patrick had to think about this for a bit, because he was kind of surprised that Spongebob would even say that question, or the motives about their shenanigans. But just curious enough to see where Spongebob was going on with this, he could only just nod because he was somewhat understood. But at the same time, Spongebob wasn't very suspicious on the detail Patrick would assume that he would. To him, almost everything seemed to be vague. But, well, yeah, what about it? Did Squidward tell you off again, Spongebob? No, Patrick. He gave out a a soft sigh. I just need time to think, and, well, I think it's time I properly apologize to him. Before he could finish his sentence, Patrick shut Spongebob's lips, outstretching them with a comedian fashion that would tell him to shush by placing a finger over his lips. Shh! Spongebob was now mildly irritated state, looked at the starfish's fingers off of his lips, and swatted him away. Patrick, I'm serious. I need to apologize to him, because honestly, it's been eating me up alive for a week. I just needed to try to think about it, reflect on what happened, and well, he was right. Spongebob, don't let him get to you. He's just a grumpy guy, don't let him get to you. Just because he's in a bad mood, doesn't mean that we can stop like we have to. Besides, we got a life to live. How can we? Maybe I could get out of the bathroom and maybe you and I could get some ice cream? Patrick tried his best to cheer his friend up, but sadly, the sponge would have to decline. He was in too much altered state of mind to even consider that option. Look, Pat, I appreciate the offer than you think, but I just need to set something straight. Spongebob gave a small pat and smile. He was still worried, but he wanted to give the starfish some hope. Pat smiled back at the sponge and given him a hard pat on the back, 
knocking SpongeBob over the stand. Thanks, SpongeBob. Uh, could I use your bathroom? Sure, Pat, go ahead, SpongeBob replied, even though he was being muffled by sand. He picked up himself up as Patrick thanked him and proceeded to go into his house. For a little while, this gave SpongeBob some time to think. Now, even though this was kind of difficult with Patrick making noises in the background, not wanting to hear him being constipated, he would just have to walk elsewhere. Sure enough, the day went by very fast, and six hours later, timestamp skipped to that evening. SpongeBob sat in front of Squidward's house, waiting for him to get back from whatever the squid did on during Saturdays. Then he heard something in the distance that sounded like suckers. They got a little louder, and the closer he got, sure enough, Squidward was back from doing whatever he was doing. He seemed in a content mood until he saw the sponge sitting by his door. He got annoyed and proceeded to stop towards Spongebob and proceeded to yell at him. Spongebob, I told you this multiple times not to wait by my house anymore. Do you want me to get the cops on you and get another restraining order from what happened last time? I just had about enough. Relax. I just want to talk. Spongebob interrupted. He didn't sound like hyper or like he normally did. He still had a serious tone. Not like the tone that needed to get stuff done, like in the previous episodes, where he would put on whatever he needed to get done. Or if he needed to rescue a friend, and so forth. His voice was low, but not too low, just to get to his point across. Squidward was also surprised to see Spongebob's change of demeanor. He was also used to Sponge laughing and giggling non-stop, and this kind of threw him off. With Patrick earlier, well, uh, this is new, he stuttered, looking at the sponge with his point of sincere. What about? This isn't some trick to set me up with one of your pranks? No, SpongeBob replied in cold tone. This is just making me all insane all day, Squidward. At least hear me out. Squidward didn't even know what to say, so he was taken aback by SpongeBob's change of mood that he had to think about his options. He was pretty sure that he was playing a joke on him, and he was just waiting for that opportunity for him to say gotcha. Especially after what Spongebob had done in the past multiple occasions with him pranking. Dragging him into situations either he didn't want to happen or he was just uncomfortable. In addition, physically harming him as well as mentally screwing him over. Squidward had no other option but just to let the sponge talk. He grabbed his keys sighing before opening the door. Well, if you want to do this, feel free to come inside. However, if this is one of your elaborate pranks, I'm kicking you out, and I'm getting another restraining order. SpongeBob didn't say anything else, and he and Squidward both entered the house and shut the door behind them. The scene that delivers another bubble splash as the screen transitions to SpongeBob and Squidward sitting across from each other at the table. The two were staring at each other what seemed to be like a few seconds before Squidward broke the silence. So? So? Go on now. You've been waiting for me to come home so we could talk about something. Whatever it is, spit it out. Spongebob sighed and looked down at his fingers, trying to fiddle with them, or at least not before long, when he looked at Squidward dead into his rectangular eyes, and Flato just replied, I'm sorry, okay? Huh? Squidward was just seen as plenty of surprises from Spongebob, but this? This had to be a first time he was generally just shocked of his advancement, he didn't think that Spongebob would say that, even if he thought he was going to pull off another trick. By the tone of his voice, he really would have seen it coming. He didn't speak it and just let the sponge talk. I'm sorry all about the shenanigans that I have caused during the past. We were just having fun. I didn't think at the time that you would probably get irritated, or at the very least, suddenly angry. I only wanted to, you to participate in the activities, because honestly, I feel like you, you needed... Did help people out with, you know, you know, wanting you to participate in activities, but hang out, maybe just want to have a little bit of fun enjoying your life. I know that I'm not 100% up there. SpongeBob pointed out at his head. There's something I do know, and that whatever happened in the past was unacceptable to me, and I had a lot of time to think about my actions. And I just want to say, I'm sorry for putting you through a lot. Our intention ended up turning out to be the opposite. Me and Patrick, our definition of fun are completely different from your definition of fun. And I probably should have kept that in mind that one Sunday when we had just took that one day out of 
day to rest because of our good deeds. I never knew how much it affected you until now. Squidward had no idea what else to say. He was more or less of words of what the sponge had recollected. He had remembered that one day when it was practically ruined due to the community service. Now that he had to serve for the rest of his life every Sunday, he wanted to get angry at Spongebob. However, he couldn't find himself to properly yell at him because he was being upfront and honest. And all above all, I am sorry for my shenanigans at the Krusty Krab. What was I thinking? Gang all worked out about two employees going to be on who's going to be employee at the month. Honestly, I think at the time I thought it was like a golden award being a high pedestal just because I did, did do all the hard work. But at the end of the day, we're still going to be stuck working at the Krusty Krab for probably a long time. I, I don't know how else I can tell you how sorry I am. I can't even tell Patrick too much because, yes, I know he's my best friend, but he won't get it. He told me that you were just grumpy old man who wants to be a bummer on all day in a way. I could agree. However, I know I'm not an innocent either. Squibbert seems lost as he rubbed his eyes softly before just looking at the sponge with a look of concern. He wanted to feel another emotion, but something restricted him from doing so emotionally bonded. In a combination with being shocked and uncertain, it yeah, made him cautious. But a part of him just wanted to speak his mind. But just be a mature person, he would have to wait for him to finish. Above all, it's my fault that you're angry at me, Pat, and mostly everyone at Bikini Bottom. This has been bothering me recently, and I just want to get this out of my head without be sounding like a fool. All in any and all, I'm sorry. Squidward then held up a tentacle. It was his turn to speak. He sighed and looked at the sponge with a serious look. His tone was the exact opposite. I'm sitting here very, very slightly conflicted. Because if you honestly want the entire truth when I listen to what you say, as much as it seems that you're trying to better yourself, I will always say that lingering truth of absolute meaner that happened between you and me, and I'm sure many people in the back of my mind, I said it so many times before, and I'll say it again, that you abused my trust. I can't exactly trust the fact that you've been saying you've been improving yourself and how can you approach certain situations? I will never be able to forget the pain I felt whenever I have thought of uh, you after our fights, and even if you wanted to call them that. SpongeBob started to tear up. He then looked at shook at Squidward's words. He didn't break into a sobbing fit this time. He just took it, and he was right. I'm honestly trying to think of how much to finish this off. Because all I think about anymore whenever I get reminded of you is utterly emotionally destroyed I was. I listened to what you said, but I don't think I can emotionally take it. I don't know, Sponge. I don't. What do you honestly want me to say in response to all of you, Spongebob? You say how emotional you'll get from the situations when you're all that instigated them. How did you think I felt and still fail? Honestly, I could have been a bag of dirt and ignore you completely. But I'm not that because I have people come up to me and bring you up. It makes me uncomfortable when you get brought up. Because I'm honestly being used to some sort of shield. Or some guinea pig for elaborate prank. Or experiment or whatever else you have in mind. If I could even remotely alike, I don't know, be okay with you I guess? I would because I immediately calm you any time but have gotten reminded of you. Spongebob didn't say anything else. He just let the squid talk, and after hearing what he had to say, he completely understood and might have had a hard time understanding and processing this information. He has to come to terms with whatever he did cannot be undone. It has been like this for a decade or two, and have pulled it off and said shenanigans with Patrick. He only had shed a few tears. He could wipe them with his face, and he tried to compose himself even though at this time it's not the easiest thing to do. He wanted to remain strong for the squid. However, Squidward can see it right through him. Don't you even think any crying is going to get you any way out of this, Spongebob, because it's not going to save you in all situations. Just accept the fact that you messed up and that you can't change and whatever happened in the past, you could try and make up the amends for me. But I mentioned before, I'm very conflicted. And if you're being honest or not... You've pulled this off too many times, and it's hard for me to believe you. You're right, Squidward. 
I just wish I knew I can make it up to you. I practically sh shattered my chances with you becoming a true friend. I could probably try to make it up by running to some errands for you, but I don't know what else I can do. All I wanted to say is that I apologize for everything, even though I repeated it more than a few times. I just can't get over it. The two of them became silent. None of them exchanged words for that long. Uncomfortable silence. SpongeBob eventually got the courage to get up from one of Squidward's chairs, and he left. He just looked at Squidward once more. Squidward then got up from his chair as well and proceeded to follow him. It seemed like he had sympathy for Sponge. However, he did have something to say. If it makes you feel better, even though you and I had some rough times, there were a few times where I generally did have fun time with you. Although I would have preferred it if you respect my boundaries like every other adult. Anyway, can you not tell Mr. Krabs? I don't want him on my case about being open with you or probably anyone else. Just remember just because you can't fix what you've already done in the past, but you could try one day and be, be a time. Your actions and your words do a lot more than you think, if we're being clear. SpongeBob then looked at Squidward and gave him a soft smile, knowing that yes, he did have some things that he couldn't take back, but he took it as another chance to redeem himself as a person. Okay, Squiddy, will do, SpongeBob said in a much happier and peppy tone, returning to his normal demeanor. Squidward would then open his door and SpongeBob would proceed to skip outside as he normally would do. Squibber then smiled back before shutting the door. The scene would then pan out very slowly, from Squibber's house to the sound of the clarinet. For one, Squibber's clarinet sounded good. The rest of the episode just fades to the black, as a bubble transition appears again, and in the episode properly. Well, I guess this is um, my review on the story that Paws the Arabian Mal wrote. wrote. Um, called Spongebob Lost Episode to Talk. Now, this is a Spongebob um, Lost Episode. I mean, it's not cliched or anything like that, which I'm impressed for it because, yeah, I'm going to be honest when I say this, most creepypastas are just cliched and they sound the exact same. But like I said before, I mean, this honestly had a really good concept for this story of its own self. I mean, the fact that Spongebob is, you know, apologizing to Squidward for all the you know, shenanigans that he and Patrick have done in the past. Like, anyone who's watched Spongebob should know, you know, that what Spongebob, how he acted in this story is completely out of uh, out of character. But, I mean, it there is a good reason. I mean, if Spongebob really means it, then I guess Squidward will have to see if Spongebob, you know, you know, changes or that. Because, yeah, I mean, I know Spongebob and Patrick have caused you know, havoc on Squidward, you know, in the show, especially for those who have seen it. But I mean, if SpongeBob is really that sorry for all this sh shit he's done to Squidward, then the best thing he pa SpongeBob could possibly do is just make up for it. Like, yeah, like, I mean, I do like the concept of it, of its own self, as well as the grammar and that. I do really can see, you know, SpongeBob doing that in this sense. That's probably just me. But, you know, I don't know how anyone else, else, you know, might take it as people might look at it and see something else. But like I said before, I mean, it's a pretty good story. So you did a pretty good job there, Pause. I really do enjoy this story. I thought it was well made. It does have a great concept. And yeah, I can honestly see this being believable in a sense. Because, yeah, I know, you know, this is uncharacteristic of SpongeBob to do that, especially to Squidward. But, yeah, I mean, it's still a pretty good concept. So, I guess with that being the case, that being said, um, yeah, like I'm just going to say, this is simply my own personal opinion. And if you happen to disagree with me, that's fine, too. We're all entitled to our own opinions in regards to these creepy pastas. And this is simply my own personal thoughts. I'm going to give this story a 10 out of 10. It's a pretty good story, not cliched. And I can honestly see SpongeBob maybe somewhat doing this. But, yeah, I mean... Despite all that, it's still a pretty interesting story. I could definitely see SpongeBob doing something like this, especially after he and Patrick do all that shit. So I guess with that being said, what did you guys think about this story? Did you enjoy it? Did you not? Also, what we have done personally to help make this story a lot better? Feel free to leave me now with your thoughts are down in the comments below. I'm the Queen of Lions. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. And if you're new to this channel... 
Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because I make brand new videos every single day. Don't forget to ring the notification bell to when I upload so that way you guys will not miss an upload. And as always, I'll be seeing you all in the next video. And please roll the outro because I'm out.